mother-in-law is a terrible thing. Or so movies and TV would have us believe. Not my mother-in-law though, she's great. So for Christmas this year, I made her this. What exactly is this? Well, it's a puzzle easel. It allows you to elevate the puzzle a bit, so you're not bent over so far while you do your puzzle. It also allows you to move the puzzle out of the way if you need the space. You can simply cover the puzzle, put all the extra pieces in these bins and tuck them away in here, and close it all up again and put it somewhere out of the way. When you're ready to work on the puzzle again, you can bring it back out and pick up where you left off. Most of this is going to be made from oak. I don't often get to work with oak or any other hardwood. I'm usually working with construction grade lumber and this oak was a treat to work with. I started by using the table saw to cut the oak board into strips. I had a tough time keeping this long board straight while I fed it through the table saw and I ended up with some burn marks on the wood. I'm not sure if it's because the table saw blade is not the right one or if my hands just weren't steady enough or maybe a bit of both. Once all those are cut, I use the new crosscut sled to cut all the strips to length. The crosscut sled has been great for jobs like this. It makes super clean cuts and I have no troubles getting very precise cuts with it. At this point I had not really decided how I wanted to join the corners. I hummed and hawed on this for a while. I wanted it to be strong and also look good. I ended up combining two types of joints, a rabbit joint with dowels added. Hopefully that'll make it good and strong. For the rabbit joint, I set up this contraption on the crosscut sled. I clamped in my workpiece, made sure it was square, and then made my cut. Once all those are cut, I change the blade height, remove my blocks, and get ready for the next cuts. For these, I didn't yet have my Cat's Moses stop block, so I use a scrap bit of oak. Now I have all my rabbits cut, I test the fit and it looks pretty good. The top and bottom part of the easel need a channel cut. On the bottom there'll be a permanently attached cover, kind of like the bottom of a drawer. And on the top there'll be a similar cover, but this one will be removable. I'm going to use the router to cut those channels. The top pieces will also need a channel for the backing board that the felt will later be attached to, so I cut those on the router as well. That pretty much completes the cuts for the oak boards. On the inside, I'm going to add some cross supports and an arm that will hold it open. For this, I'm using some pine scraps that I already have on hand. These need to be cut into strips on the table saw. I did not have the same burning issue with this wood, either because it was a shorter board and I managed to hold it steady, or because the wood is much softer, or maybe both. Now back to the crosscut sled to cut these all to length. The two pieces for the bottom are going to get a cross lap joint, and for that I'm going to use the crosscut sled as well. This thing is really proving useful and a great addition to the shop. The top will have an arm that will rest in some notches on the bottom so that the easel angle can be adjusted. For the notches on the bottom, I'm going to use a Forstner bit and just cut away about half of the bit's width. The arm will have a dowel at the bottom to rest in those notches, so I use a roundover bit to make the dowel from oak scraps. At 
at this point I have all my parts cut, so now I can do some sanding. That sanded well enough for me, so let's dry fit it all together. Off camera I also cut the top and bottom from some scraps of paneling that I used on the walls for the shop. I also cut some old pegboard to use as the backing for the felt. I was thinking about using the paneling for this as well, but it's just a bit too thin and flimsy. The pegboard works really well because it's thicker, but since it's full of holes it won't be so heavy. When this is all done, it needs to be light enough to be lifted by its new owner. Everything looks ready now and it's time to get out the glue and put it all together. I used some positioning squares to make sure that everything was square and then clamped it all down nice and tight. Once that was dry enough, it's time to add some dowels to help strengthen these corners. It seems I was not accurate enough on my routing, and to get the inner channels aligned, this board didn't quite line up with this one, but I can live with that. So I used a punch to make a spot to drill, and drilled a couple of holes. Now I can add some glue and tap in the dowels. Once those are in, I use the Japanese pull saw to trim them flush. I don't have a proper flush trim saw yet, but the pull saw did well enough. Now I just need to sand those down a bit. After I had all the corners done, I added the panel to the bottom with some brad nails. And now for the top part. With it all put together, I'm going to add this water-based stain and polyurethane combination. I chose golden oak because why not? It ended up looking really good, and even the paneling looked a lot better than it does on the walls of the shop. I would almost consider covering all the walls of my shop with this stuff, but I would need buckets of it. The lid that covers the puzzle when you want to move it around is held down by these little picture frame turn buttons. But they're all metal and they'll end up scratching the lid over time. So I thought I would use some packing tape to try to help reduce that. When the stain is all dry, I can add hinges, a handle, a lock to keep it closed, and some felt over the pegboard. I'm super excited about this one. It looks great and I can't wait to see the mother-in-law's face when she first sees it. I do need to take it for a test drive though, so I got a puzzle and started to put it together. I'll include this puzzle in the easel when I present it to my mother-in-law. I'm sure she'll love it. I also 3D printed a couple of bins that can be used to hold puzzle pieces while you work on your puzzle. As I mentioned before, the crosscut sled was very useful in this project. Click here to see how the crosscut sled was made. 